Hello and welcome to a new adventure and in today's video we're going to be looking at the rumoured underground subway system that was supposed to be built here underneath City Square in Leeds. So I'm currently stood in City Square directly opposite the Queen's Hotel. Now there's rumours going round everywhere and a little bit of evidence that there were many plans for subways and underground systems in Leeds. Now, apparently one was started right here underneath City Square. There have been many plans over the years for some form of mass transit system for Leeds. And as of 2022, there still hasn't been any movement or progress on this. In fact, Leeds is the largest European city without a mass transit system, which is pretty poor by any standards. But then again, it's not close enough to the M25 for that to be an issue. There's been talks and whispers recently of this actually happening soon. But no matter what government is in charge or who we have on the council, it never seems to get beyond fancy visuals and talk. However, if we go back much further in history, back when Leeds was actually recognised as a major city outside of London, yes, it once was, back during World War II, Plans were being drawn up for a mass transit system to replace the already overcrowded electric tram network. This would have been an underground subway system, one based on the London Underground, but instead using single-deck converted electric trams. Council meetings took place in the late 1930s and secret plans were being drawn up to transform the City of Leeds transport network. It was the brainchild of the Council Transport General Manager Vane Morland. His original idea was to move the whole electric tram system underground, away from the already congested roads and replacing the ageing and cluttered tram network above the ground. He ran studies on similar systems in Stockholm, New York and London and came up with a master plan with the exact routes and the list of stations already mapped out. The system would have utilised three separate lines covering most of the city centre area, with all three lines passing through a major hub station on Brigate, and two lines passing through similar hubs at the Corn Exchange and City Square. Line 1 would run from the north to the west of the city, starting at Blenheim's on Woodhouse Lane, and stations at the Hedrow near the light. Brigate, outside today's Trinity Centre, City Square and ending towards the end of Wellington Street. Line 2 would run from the north to the east of the city, starting at Skinner Lane, with stations at North Street, where the A64M sits today, and Brigate, Corn Exchange, and ending at Marsh Lane, behind the old Quarry Hill Flats. And finally, Line 3. This would have been a more circular route, reminiscent to the circle line on the London Underground. It started at City Square and headed out in a loop, moving as far south of the city as Great Wilson Street. It had stations at Meadow Lane, the Corn Exchange, Brigate and back to City Square. This line would have been 20 feet lower than the east and west lines, as it would need to pass below the River Air, and also the other two lines at various points. The City Square hub station would have been a large underground chamber, based on two levels, a ticket concourse on the first level and the platforms on the second, all dug out beneath the entirety of the square. It would have had seven entrances, four in City Square, two of them would be outside the old GPO building and two using escalators underneath where the concrete planters are today, but we'll get to that shortly. There were two entrances at each end of the Queen's Hotel and one outside of Mill Hill Chapel. All entrances were either sloped walkways or escalators and with lifts and staircases down to all platforms from the ticket and the concourse area. It went as far as advanced plans and some say it went even further with experimental tunnels and chambers dug underneath City Square. There is some small evidence in writing that this was the case but that could be interpreted in a different way. A lot of people mention these photographs are of them building the test tunnels, 
They are labelled Excavation of Marsh Lane Subway. But after researching this, I believe that these are no more than utility tunnels. We do know for sure that a prototype tram was purchased for testing. A single deck tram was purchased from Sunderland to become the test bed for subway trials in Leeds. This is known today as Tram 600 and can still be seen today at the National Tramway Museum in Kreitsch. The whole system was estimated to cost around £800,000 per mile, equating to £2.4 million for Phase 1, which would have needed a huge 80-year loan back in those days, and probably still repaying it now. In 1944, the plans were amended and expanded even further, with the lines extending further out of the city. But by 1945, with the whole country in austerity due to World War II, and victories for Labour in the general election and local elections, the whole project was stopped in its tracks and shelved. All experimental work was halted, and the prototype tram placed into storage and eventually sold off. We will now have a look around City Square and see if we can see anything lurking around today. Now what's left today? Who knows? This square has been redone so many times and as far as I'm aware it's about to be redone once more and changed again. So who knows what they'll uncover here and what's been filled in along with the various projects over the years. But one thing we know is a lot of these old buildings here haven't changed. They've been here for a long time now. Now we know for definite that there used to be a load of underground Victorian toilets here underneath this square. And I've got pictures of that which I'll put in, but we do know that they were blocked up a long, long time ago. However, what they built underneath it at the side of the toilets is anyone's guess. Now they always say if there's any rumoured tunnels underneath anything, and they're not filled in, then there will always be an access to that tunnel because they need to maintain it. And also, if it floods, they need to be able to empty it. So all the time I'm walking around here, my eyes are constantly scanning for doorways and hatches and even grates in the road. Now, curiously, this little island here where people can sit down, I have just spotted this here, a hatch with a lock. Now that normally leads to suspicion with me. What is in there? What's behind there? You see a drainage system there. And even things like these, these are probably telephone. And there is another one on the same mound right here. But again, these could be just simply, I don't know, electric substations or something like that. But you can also see there's a hatch on the top there, which fills me with even more suspicion that you could access whatever is under here from that mound there. Now let me know in the comments below, am I talking utter tripe or is there something under here? And has anybody got any evidence? Now there was a rumoured plan that was drawn up showing what was underneath here and the various levels. This was found many years ago and spread like wildfire across all the forums in Leeds and Facebook groups. So it did support that at least the council were looking into it. And we also know when I looked at the Kearney's Railway at the Crystal Palace, if you haven't seen that video, check that out. I did a video on the Kearney's Railway. And now we know from the historic records that he was consulting with Leeds City Council at the time to build his underground system. It was a really weird sort of monorail type of Wuppertal railway system, but underground, it was strange. That would have been probably what they were looking at for this here. The Kearney High Speed Railway was an innovative underground monorail type system. The prototype model of this could be found at the Festival of Empire at the Crystal Palace. I have covered this in a video, so check out the link for that below. The carriage would suspend from a single guide rail above and would also have the same underneath, but with larger wheels, appearing like a mirrored monorail system. This was intended to reduce friction and thus preventing derailments and allowing greater speeds. 
The Kearney system used the effects of gravity to speed itself up and slow it down, thus reducing the need for large powerful motors and heavy braking systems. It was in effect a roller coaster type motion, with the carriage leaving a subsurface tunnel, coasting down a slope into a deep level tunnel, and at a gradient of 1 in 7, and then coast back up to the other side to the next station. None of these were ever built, but we do know that advanced discussions took place between Kearney and Leeds Council about bringing this concept to Leeds as a new subway system in the 1930s or 40s. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. A look into one of the interesting rumours circulating round. The many rumours about tunnels and things underneath Leeds. This one has always fascinated me with it being railway related. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Did it exist? Didn't it? Did you have any evidence for it? I'll see you later. Bye.